Welcome back to Models in Quantum Mechanics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. This is going to be our final model leading up to the hydrogenic atom, and it's the rigid rotor model. And again, just like in the previous videos, this first video is just introductory. I want to introduce you to the mechanics of rigid rotor model, where we look at the wave function, we look at the energy eigenvalue, and in future videos we'll actually look at dealing with the mathematics behind it and doing calculations and theory and so on and so forth. Now one thing, the rigid rotor model is also called particle on a sphere. So this actually has a similar context to particle on a ring, except now the particle is confined to anywhere on a sphere. So to imagine this, imagine that you are on the moon, the surface of the moon. You can walk anywhere on the moon, you can't jump off of the moon, right, because you'll float out into outer space. You can't bury into the moon. You can just walk anywhere on the surface of the moon. So you're confined to the surface of that sphere. And the sphere obviously has a radius r. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you two things that you need to be able to do this kind of problem. Okay. You need to know two quantum numbers. You need to know the azimuthal quantum number. And you also need to know the magnetic quantum number. Okay, these are usually going to be given to you okay, if there's a problem. And it turns out that the wave functions for the rigid rotor model, which we normally call psi, are called something different in this context. These are called spherical harmonics, and they're normally denoted by this y. And you notice here there's some subscripts, L, comma, magnetic quantum number. So the y that, that you use depends on what your azimuthal quantum number is and what your magnetic quantum number is. Now, I will say this. Why these spherical harmonics, which are the wave functions of rigid rotor model? This seems very complicated, and it's usually explained in a very convoluted way in textbooks, but this is your wave function. If you're given a y, for this model, that is your psi, that is your wave function. Now, in some cases, they'll explain it's a product of two other functions. One of them's a function of theta, one's a function of phi. This just complicates things. You're looking for something that is y. That is your spherical harmonic solution. That is your wave function, okay? And you will find these y's tabulated usually in a table like this. So for example, if you had an azimuthal quantum number of 1 and a magnetic quantum number of 0, which would probably be given, obviously, then that means you're going to use this wave function. This is your wave function. It is 3 over 4 pi to the 1 half power times cosine of theta. If you've got an azimuthal quantum number of 2 and you've got a magnetic quantum number of, let's say, positive 2, then this is going to be your wave function. This is going to be your spherical harmonic right here. Okay, so you need to know those two things to determine what your y is, but these y's right here, these are your size, basically. They're just given a different variable for whatever bizarre reason, just to complicate things on you. But that's what you do. You determine your azimuthal and your magnetic quantum number, and then you just look up your wave function at table. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, in some ways, this is a little bit easier than harmonic oscillator, which you have to construct from three different components. But I go over that in a different video. I think this is a little bit simpler. So hopefully that makes sense. You get these two values and then you look up the corresponding solution. Okay. Now the energy eigenvalue and the other thing you want to know. It's sometimes given as j times j plus 1 times h bar squared over 2i. Um, this j is your azimuthal quantum number and it can take on values such as one, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. h bar is just h bar, and then you divide by 2i. Now remember, i is the moment of inertia, and so this i you can expand into the product of m and r squared. So generally speaking, you're not given a moment of inertia, but you are given the mass of the particle because generally we're confining an electron, which you can look up the mass of an electron, and then you'll be typically given the radius of the sphere. Okay, and you just plug that in and square it. So if you wanted to calculate the energy of this particle that is confined to a sphere, the surface of the sphere, you take h bar squared divided by 2, divided by the mass of the particle, and then divide by the square of the radius of the sphere, and then multiply times the azimuthal quantum number plus 1, and then times the azimuthal quantum number. And whatever this turns out to be, that is the energy of the particle that is confined to the sphere. Okay, so... I hope this made sense and helped you understand what you're actually looking at. 
In other videos, we'll actually go over the theory, interpretation, and practice problems for the rigid rotor model. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.